Kingdom Hearts series is hugely popular, being a unique blend of both Square Enix and Disney. Spanning over a decade and numerous entries, Kingdom Hearts weaves a rich mythology, one that continues to expand with each new installment. In fact, series director Tetsuya Nomura has stated that he usually thinks ahead of the next game in the series, while he's currently making one every time, so naturally the plot can get very detailed. Unfortunately for some, due to the spread of the series over numerous consoles, it can even become pretty confusing, as a lot of fans haven't played the portable installments, mistaking them for mere spin-offs, when games such as Birth by Sleep and Dream Drop Distance are actually main titles that simply lack a Roman numeral. Nevertheless, fans around the globe have scoured every detail for clues in order to unravel the mysteries of the series, as well as some of the more complicated plot points. We, with the help of Kingdom Hearts insider staff, have brought together the more complicated aspects of the series' lore in order to shed light on them and prepare everyone for the final confrontation between Sora and Master Xehanort in Kingdom Hearts 3 on the PS4 and Xbox One. <laughs> In this episode, we'll cover the concept of time travel, something that was first introduced by the most recent installment in the series, Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance on the 3DS. Uh, Although we saw Sora, Donald, and Goofy travel back in time to the Timeless River in Kingdom Hearts 2 with the aid of Merlin's magic, the manner in which they journeyed through time is much different than what Xehanort does. Timeless River is essentially an isolated time pocket anomaly that can be entered but cannot be used to traverse to other places in that time. The Timeless River is only connected to Disney Castle, as it has likely something to do with the Cornerstone of Light and has no bearing on the rest of the worlds or the Kingdom Hearts universe. It's also important to note that though Sora and Riku appear to be time-traveling while they traverse the Realm of Sleep by visiting different worlds in Dream Drop Distance, they actually aren't. The worlds themselves in Dream Drop Distance are trapped in sleep. These are the worlds that fell to darkness before the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 1, but did not return to the Realm of Light at the end of the game. They remained trapped in the realm of sleep, meaning that while the worlds are sleeping, they merely dream of the inhabitants that used to dwell there. <laughs> in Dream Drop Distance, we learn that the antagonist from the first title, Ansem, Seeker of Darkness, aka Apprentice Xehanort's Heartless, went back in time to transfer his powers to a young, teenage version of Xehanort, long before any of the events of Birth by Sleep took place. To move through time, you must leave your body behind. Ansem first sent me on my way and then placed himself here when the time was right. That is what set all these events in motion." Now, of course, he couldn't just pop into a different time period with a snap of his fingers. There are special rules in place that restrict who can travel and when, and where an individual could go. First, a person must exist only as a heart, so they have to abandon their body and soul before anything else. For example, after Apprentice Xehanort separates himself into a heartless and nobody, the heartless version of himself, Ansem Seeker of Darkness, goes back in time to meet with his youngest self, right before he became a Keyblade wielder. After becoming a heart, that being can only move in one direction, meaning that you can only go back to the past or return back to your point of origin in the present. However, it is not possible to travel to the future from the present, which is essentially the end of Dream Drop Distance as of now. If one travels to the past, they're not allowed to change events that are destined to happen, which means that everything up to the present is set in stone and cannot be altered. Only what has yet to be, the future, can be changed, meaning the events that have yet to unfold in Kingdom Hearts 3. Once one returns to their proper place in the timeline, they won't be able to remember anything they've done while time traveling. However, these events are still etched into one's heart, as was the case with young Xehanort, who eventually grew up to become the villainous Master Xehanort. What an individual experiences while time traveling is remembered by the heart, so the user follows the path set out for himself unknowingly. And finally, a time traveler can only travel throughout their own lifetime. A version of their self has to be present at every destination that they visit. Now that we've established the ground rules of time traveling in the Kingdom Hearts universe, it's time to take a look and see how Xehanort used time travel for his nefarious schemes. Sometime after Apprentice Xehanort overthrows Ansem the Wise and steals his name, he decided to deliberately turn himself into a Heartless. Although the reasons prior to Dream Drop Distance's release were a bit vague, in that game it is finally revealed that he did so in order to gain the power to travel through time. You see, by becoming a Heartless, Apprentice Xehanort managed to rid himself of his body, which became Xemnas, his nobody, and was essentially turned into a walking heart. 
Unlike every other Heartless out there though, he managed to retain his consciousness and sense of self due to his strong darkness. The only other time this is seen in the series is with Sora in Kingdom Hearts 1, though he wasn't nearly as strong, likely due to how weak the darkness was in his heart. It also seems that at this point, Apprentice Xehanort had managed to regain his original memories from his time as Master Xehanort, and so he began utilizing time travel in order to carry out his evil schemes. During both Birth by Sleep's secret ending and Dream Drop Distance's ending, it's revealed that Master Xehanort had been able to predict most, if not everything, that would eventually transpire over the course of the series thus far. Master Xehanort foresaw many possibilities for his plans to be thwarted and made several contingency plans to ensure that one would eventually succeed. He correctly predicted that Master Yen Sid would put Sora and Riku through the Mark of Mastery exam and would have them enter the realm of sleep by making them travel back in time to their younger selves, specifically to the point where they were about to leave Destiny Islands for the first time in Kingdom Hearts 1. So he made sure that Apprentice Xehanort's Heartless would be placed there for him to manipulate their trip to the realm of sleep, replacing the Riku sigil on Sora's chest which allows young Master Xehanort to track Sora on his Mark of Mastery exam. The symbol is actually an X mark that stands for the Greek letter key, symbolizing the key blade that Master Xehanort is after, which explains why they chose said sigil for this purpose. That sigil, the X, it tells us where you are at all times. After accomplishing everything he could while time traveling, apprentice Xehanort's Heartless traveled far into the past when Xehanort was a teenager living in Destiny Islands, who didn't even know what a Keyblade was at the time. The Heartless passed on his time traveling abilities to the young man and taught him everything he knew, as apprentice Xehanort's Heartless would lose all of that as soon as he possessed Riku's body in Hallow Bastion during Kingdom Hearts 1. How was I so blind? I should have seen it as soon as Maleficent started gathering the seven princesses of heart. In Dream Drop Distance, it was revealed that Master Xehanort's plan was to make sure that he had 13 incarnations of himself in the future, in order for them to clash with seven guardians of light and thus recreate the Keyblade, granting him access to the true Kingdom Hearts. Oh. This was Xemnas's, Apprentice Xehanort's Nobody's, original motivation for creating Organization 13. However, Master Xehanort knew that there was a chance for the plan to fail, so he made sure that his younger self had the means to collect various versions of himself from different time periods and place them all together, including organization members such as Brig and Issa, who had pieces of Xehanort within themselves. Me? I'm already half Xehanort. Throughout the course of Dream Drop Distance, young Xehanort is able to bring alongside him these versions of himself, such as Apprentice Xehanort's Heartless after having possessed Riku, and Xemnas, to taunt both Sora and Riku on their quest to unlock the Sleeping World's keyholes. Yeah. <laughs> Initially, Roxas, Sora's nobody, was to be the 13th vessel for Master Xehanort's plan, but at the end of 358 over two days, he manages to escape the organization, and after the prologue in Kingdom Hearts 2, finally merges back with Sora, thus throwing a wrench in Master Xehanort's plan for a new vessel. Xehanort then turned his sights on Riku for a new vessel, but throughout Chain of Memories in Kingdom Hearts 2, Riku manages to conquer and control the darkness within him, which made him no use to Master Xehanort. This led Master Xehanort to move down the list and set his sights on Sora. Though seemingly an unshakable pillar of light, Sora had actually been suffering from his own darkness throughout the series. He took on the weight of the hearts of Ventus, Xion, and Roxas, and this consequently began to damage his own. But first! The thirteen darknesses shall be united. All the seats have been filled. And now, the last vessel shall bear my heart like the rest. During the end of Dream Drop Distance, young Xehanort and his new time-traveling organization managed to lure Sora deeper and deeper into the realm of sleep and damage his already strained heart enough to put him into a deep slumber. This made him susceptible enough to receive a piece of Xehanort's heart inside his own, in order to make Sora one of Xehanort's incarnations. Luckily, Sora was rescued at the last minute by Lee, the reincarnated somebody of Axel, from the clutches of all the different incarnations of Xehanort meeting at the iconic white chamber known as where nothing gathers in the castle that never was, which is where all Organization 13 members gather together to discuss. <laughs> We weren't shown who all those Xehanort incarnations were, except for the fact that they were all brought there by young Xehanort himself. Regardless, the plan failed, and every one of them would return to their own time, oblivious to the events that occurred during their time travels. 
However, once young Xehanort returned to his own time, these locked memories would manifest in his heart, etching his path towards darkness. Neither the union of light nor darkness has been achieved. We must all return whence we came. So Master Xehanort's plan was foiled, but not all was lost. He had managed to return to his old self and would make sure that all seven Guardians of Light, whoever they might be, would gather to clash with Xehanort and twelve other incarnations of himself from different time periods in Kingdom Hearts 3. Let us finish this at the fated place, once your lights and my darknesses have joined together! Pop Fiction is teaming up with Kingdom Hearts Insider to bring you a series of five of the biggest mysteries in the popular Square Enix crossover RPG franchise. Kingdom Hearts Mysteries continues with our second installment, focusing on the connection Sora shares with others. So be sure to return back to game trailers next month for more Kingdom Hearts Mysteries. Huh? Master Xehanort! Huh? We were right about you!